So a couple of weeks back, I started seeing these news stories about something called Tiny 11. Apparently this is a highly modified version of Windows 11 that has a lot of the bloat stripped out of it. Now this reminds me of back in the day when I used to install something called Tiny XP on all those various ASUS EPC netbooks that I was messing around with to make that operating system run much better on the low-end hardware that I was installing it on. And Tiny 11 is supposed to do the same sort of thing. It's supposed to take Windows 11 and make it run on low-end hardware much better. Of course, Windows 11 requires at least four gigs of RAM. Well, with Tiny 11, people have been running on as little as, I think, 200 megabytes, which is absolutely insane, but the creator says two gigabytes should be absolutely sufficient. And at first I thought to myself, that's pretty cool, but I don't really have any use case for that. But then I remembered something. I remembered that Microsoft actually sent me a Surface Go 3 a couple of months back, and this is the four gig model. Of course, it does also have that very slow eMMC storage. And I thought to myself, it would be really cool to install Tiny11 here and see once and for all, how much of a problem is that RAM? How much is that RAM, that four gigs of RAM actually slowing things down? And how much of it is probably that eMMC storage that is exactly what I've done. I've installed Tiny11 on here and we're gonna talk about it. Really quickly though, I wanna tell you kinda how to install this. So there are a couple of links in the description down below. The first one is going to be to the Internet Archive webpage that is hosting Tiny 11. Now, if you scroll down over here at the download options, you can download the different ISOs. I downloaded the 22H2 Beta 2 no system requirements. Okay, so that is exactly what it sounds like. There are no system requirements. You can install it on anything. Now, keep in mind, this is all based on Windows Pro. So if you're like me and you have a product key for Windows Home, you're going to need to activate it again. You're going to need to do what I did and runs to some place like G2A and buy a $25 uh, Windows key for Pro to then activate it. So that being said, if this video was useful to you and you want to help me recoup that $25 I spent to activate this to have all my you know customization and everything on here, maybe hit that super thanks or something and pitch him for that. But at any rate, just keep that in mind. Okay, if you're installing this, you don't have a pro key, you're gonna need a pro key to activate it to not have the watermark and then okay, all that stuff. Download that. I would recommend though, rather than downloading ISO, if you know how to use a torrent, if you have uTorrent or something like that, download the torrent instead. It's going to download a million times faster. Okay, the other thing you need is something called Rufus, which is a utility to put, uh, to basically create a bootable USB drive, which is also leading me towards the next thing you need a USB drive. This is just a simple 32 gig. Uh, USB stick from Samsung. So download Rufus, download your ISO, and then you're going to go to the next set of steps. Okay, so we've got Rufus running here. We have our 32 gig flash drive that we're going to be flashing this thing to. You're going to want to select that. We're going to then select disk or ISO image, click on select, and we're going to navigate to that ISO that we just now downloaded should be able to leave everything else exactly as it is and just simply click on start. Obviously, you're gonna lose everything on the flash drive, so make sure you've backed up all that stuff because it will be gone when you click OK. And it's gonna do its thing and install this onto the flash drive. All right, so once that is done, which it should take a couple of minutes, you can feel free to close this out, unplug your flash drive and move to the device you're installing on. So let's see what we have here on my existing installation of Windows 11 on my Surface Go 3. We'll take a look at the task manager here and see exactly what we are dealing with. So if we go over to the performance tab, you can see that the CPU is sort of idling right around that 10% mark. Sometimes a bit higher, sometimes a bit lower, but the memory, the RAM usage is the thing we really wanna see get reduced. And we're using 3.2 gigs out of the 3.9 gigs available. So three quarters of our RAM is already being used despite the fact that very little is actually running in the background. You can see here on my startup tab as I zoom in here, that most of this stuff is disabled. So almost nothing is running in the background, yet my RAM usage is well up over three quarters of the total available RAM. So what we need to do now is we need to take a good long look at this, kind of see where we were, and then we're gonna install this Tiny 11 and see if it makes a substantial difference to these numbers and performance going forward. 
Now, of course, the Surface Go 3 only has a single USB, and it's a USB-C, so we have a hub here, which I'm hoping this will work. So we're plugging in our flash drive there. We're going to hold, I believe, it is volume down and power while you're booting. Let's see if this gets us into a boot menu. Fingers crossed. As you can see here, it didn't go into the boot menu like I was expecting, but it did go straight into the Windows setup process, which does look a little bit different here from normal, but I think it's going to be pretty much the same process as usual. And you can see that the touch screen on this was actually already working. The trackpad on the cover, the type cover was also already working. And what you're going to want to do from here, you see all these different partitions. We have to delete these to create the free space to install Tiny 11 as we move forward. So we're going to click on each one of these and we're going to click delete down below and either click on OK, use your arrow to go over to OK, however you want to do it, and just go through and delete each of these partitions, leaving unallocated space as the only thing left, and then click next on that unallocated space. You should be greeted by this screen here as it goes ahead and installs Tiny11 on your device. And that entire process actually only took a handful of minutes. It was very, very fast, about as fast as a normal Windows installation, I guess. So we have here just the normal Windows setups. So we're gonna run through this really quickly. And then here we are at our desktop booted fully in this entire process from like the installation process onto your flash drive, the download, all of it only took me about 30 or 35 minutes. We're gonna fire up task manager here and see if we have any kind of comparison to make straight out of the box. And obviously the first thing we're gonna see here is that the CPU usage is still actually really, really high. So that's gonna to need to be kind of looked at a bit later, but the memory has gone down by an entire gigabyte, which normally isn't that much, but we've only got four gigs to deal with. That is a substantial reduction in memory usage. Now, of course, nothing is installed on this device yet. We still need to jump into Windows Update and get all that stuff going before we can really make an assessment on how well this is working. So that is what we're going to do next. You can see there is a ton of stuff, all of the Surface firmware, all the Surface stuff you need to download is all in there, ready to go. So I'm gonna get all that stuff downloaded and let's see where we actually wind up. All right, so I've taken the time here to install all of the programs that I use and get this thing basically set up the way that I like it. And I must say that it does definitely appear to be running a bit faster and a bit smoother than it was before. Now let's open up the task manager and now you can kind of see more directly what we're talking about. Uh, go to the performance tab here and let's let the CPU take a second to settle down and I think you'll see it's only sticking at about 4%, whereas before it was almost always up over 10%. So that is definitely a bit of an improvement. What about on the RAM usage? We have jumped up a little, but only to 2.4 gigabytes out of the 3.9 available. So that is, again, a large reduction in the amount of RAM that is being used. I guess I should have also shown you this in the task manager as well. Let's look at the startup applications and I'll bring this up so that you can read it. There are a lot less. You can see there that I've installed Steam and I've installed Discord and the Xbox app for Game Pass and all of these sorts of things. And that's all that's on here. Okay. So things like uh, OneDrive, Solitaire, the get started stuff, to do, alarm, calendar, feedback cub, map, sound recorder, on and on and on and on. All of these things are gone. But of course, you can go into the Microsoft Store and pay attention to how uh, maybe not super quick this still is because the EMMC storage is still very slow. But you can go into the Microsoft Store and install most of these things. And in fact, when you first boot up, you won't even have a web browser. You're gonna to need to go into your Microsoft Store and install something like Edge, Chrome, or Firefox to properly get started. But of course, it's all there. And once you've done that, you're off and running. In fact, let's close this and let's open up Microsoft Edge. I believe I just missed the icon there. Nope, I did actually hit it. It's just, it's just a little bit slow. Okay, so there you go. We're loading into YouTube at this point. 
Let's jump over to Twitter and you'll see again, this is not going to be, you know, an incredibly fast device even with this going on. But what I will tell you is that it is definitely a faster device than it was before. We'll launch Hulu. This is an app directly from the Microsoft Store. So this is one that should run a little bit better. And as you can see, it does launch up and load in relatively quickly. And if we jump in here where I have Edge open, I have a web app of YouTube open, I have the Hulu app also trying to open, and we pull up our task manager one more time, we are still only hitting 3.4 gigs of RAM being used. And let's be honest, with a Surface Go device, you're not using this thing as some powerhouse device. You're not going to be doing crazy stuff on it. This is the kind of stuff most people will be doing. They're enjoying their multimedia. They're enjoying YouTube. They're enjoying browsing the web. And now you do have a ton more, like literally a quarter more headroom than you had before in terms of your RAM. Unfortunately, like I keep saying, the slow storage appears to be the biggest problem. I got so many comments on my review of this device saying four gigs of RAM is you can't run Windows on four gigs of RAM. When the reality is you kind of can. The storage was the problem. And even now, which you can see that the RAM is not even being tapped out most of the time. You're still sitting at, you know, a gig of free RAM. It's still not super fast. But what I will say, if you're asking yourself, should I be installing Tiny 11 on my 4 gigs of RAM Surface Go 3? I would say probably yes, because it is faster for me than it was before. Now, the good news is you can go into Windows Update and install those updates. There was some weirdness with that where I think some of them maybe were duplicated and then they went away and whatever. I got the thing fully updated though, and then I ended up having to go and actually download the driver package for the Surface Go 3 directly from Microsoft. I installed that, and now Windows Hello is working. Literally everything is working exactly as it was before, but the biggest difference is it's like I basically installed an extra gig of RAM in this device. So again, if you have this device, I would say go ahead and give it a shot. Just keep in mind that when Windows 12 comes out, you're probably going to have to do something different at that point. So let me know in the comments down below if you want to see my Steam Deck run Tiny 11 as well. It's already running Windows 11, but maybe Tiny 11 makes sense for it to. Maybe that video will come down the line. Guys, subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.